Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you. Thank you for your time. Time is short, so I won't, I won't spend too long, but i um, just like to introduce to my left Lizzie Yarnold, who will be the um, flag bearer for us in the uh, in the opening ceremony. So we have about 15 minutes with Lizzie now, so I'll open the um, open the floor to questions straight away. Sean. Hi, Barry. First of all, I am hugely honoured to be the flag bearer. I know um, being the flag bearer in the closing ceremony in Sochi was really cool, but it was a celebration event of an amazing game. Whereas um, tomorrow, I think I do feel a bit of responsibility. You know, it's the beginning of the games and I'm representing the team, so I can't drop the flag or, you know, get it wrapped in the pole. I've got to make sure that... I stand tall and, and representing all of Great Britain is of something um, I'm used to doing on the competition field but um, in a ceremonial moment it's it's really really exciting it's something which I never thought I'd have the opportunity to do and secondly um, I've put my jacket at the side but we have loads of thick layers and this massive um, opening ceremony jacket so as, as winter athletes, you know, we always go outside with salopettes and thick socks and hats and whatnot. So I'm not concerned about the cold. You know, I, it's nice to come here and have freezing cold ice, you know, really good quality um, competition venues. So it's something that winter athletes, um, we're totally used to, and I'm not concerned about it affecting anything. Can you just take the mic, Mark? Sorry, I should have said that at the start. It's okay. How is it? Hiya. Are, you, are you going to attempt any sort of one-handed manoeuvres like Pinson and Redgrave and whoever it was in the past who did the same thing? So Steve Redgrave, I think, was the first. So Matt Pinson has given me some advice. I can switch arms if it gets <laughs> tired. I am going to give it a try, I think. Um, it is a big moment, and I think it will be a great photo, you know, for my family and my kids, when, when I was a kid watching the opening ceremony, you know, that moment when they say, Great Britain, that, that is when I start to cry. So I'll have the, the flag in one hand and, you know, tissues in my pocket. And it's a really awesome moment. So I hope that it will look, it will look good and I'll do the team proud. Sean? Sorry, Megan. Um, <clears throat> what is the mood like in the camp? I mean... We were all at a BOA briefing last month and the sort of medal target's five, but that ambition is, is ten. And if that happens, Mark has suggested he'll, he'll run naked uh, in the bathroom and, and get shot. <laughs> um, so we're all cheering on for ten. Um, what is the mood and, 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 and you know, is, is, is ten medals perhaps a possibility? I think this, um, this Olympics, I'm in a flat with five other athletes. Um, in Sochi, I was sort of mixed with the skeleton team. So I do have a really nice, different perspective of, OK, what, what does biathlon entail? You know, how does it work with the different events and learning more about other sports? Um, but I think it's, it's hard to speak for someone else. But I, as an athlete, I know that coming to an Olympics, especially your first, is, of course, a, a little bit overwhelming. Um, but when you, when you speak to other people, even though they're, they're a slope-style athlete or something completely different like biathlon, we're essentially just the same, which is really refreshing to know that, yeah, we're, we're a bit nervous. It's the moment of our careers, but everyone is out early training or coming in late from another session, and all we can do is focus on those sessions and making sure we're doing video sessions and, and ready for competition. So, yeah, in terms of medal targets, I can't wait for this to be, hopefully, our best medal haul for the Winter Olympics. So we'll see what happens, and hopefully in skeleton, you know, wouldn't it be awesome to have two females on the podium together? Firstly, congratulations, Lizzie. Obviously, um, you've mentioned about the hard ice here and the, the sort of the, the, the good side of that. It's quite a technical course here as well, isn't it, on the slopes here? Obviously, you finished fourth here in the test event last year. Are you looking forward to the, the challenge that it possesses once again? Yes, it is a really technical track. I guess learning any track 
is technical and then when you start to unpick it and now it's my third visit here I've snuck in a few kind of rest corners as I call them where I know what to do I know the predictability of the corner and I can relax a little bit and then refocus for the next corner so um, I feel certainly more at home here and it is a joy to slide I couldn't wait to slide yesterday having had just three weeks off the ice um, and I was going down you know making mistakes making mistakes but it doesn't matter because I'm going 124 kilometers an hour you know it was so much fun um, so yeah I'm looking forward to the next few days of of training and trying different things you know it's all about trying the different lines and learning more and then bringing it all together for the competition <laughs> I happened to look at the odds for um, the, the Bob Skeleton uh, for our chances, and I noticed you and Laura were outsiders. Uh, I think you're, you're 20 to 1, I think Laura's around the same price. Uh, do you feel both of you have been a bit disrespected by the wider, wider crew? Because, you know, you are an Olympic champion, you've proved you can do it when it matters, and are you, you sort of mentioned both of you get on the podium, do you think that's a realistic ambition? Um, well, I don't know many uh, betting companies well, but maybe they don't understand the world of sport. Um, there are some athletes that really thrive in the big moments. I think I'm one of those. And yes, of course, it's actually quite nice to be an underdog sometimes and, and to come into this Olympics having a very up and down World Cup season. There's still a lot of lessons to learn and, and moments to reflect and rethink. And both Laura and I work together we're very much friends off of the ice and competitors on the ice and when you come back to the flat think oh what on earth did you do in corner two today it looks really good you know how did you and we help each other and learn so I hope I, I do believe that it's absolutely realistic that we both have the chance to be on the podium but it's about being consistent over four runs two days so yeah we'll see I can't I, I can't wait Can, given what you've said about the subject in the past, can you describe your feelings when you heard the CAS ruling about Russians and what do you hope for from today's um, appeal of the appeal or whatever it is? I think um, it has been quite an emotional um, situation and yeah, it's it's been challenging, I guess, over the past few years, um, knowing that there is doping um, or you know issues in our sport and yes I do absolutely believe in a fair and clean competition but we'll have to see how it goes over the next 24 hours um, I don't know which way it's going to go and I can try and say I compete against those I compete against when it comes to the competition um, yes it is difficult if the Russians will be here competing I, I believe that the IOC were correct in not inviting them or you know re-inviting them to compete here in Pyeongchang but essentially it is just me and the track it's me my sled and the track so that is my focus there must be more <laughs> uh, Lizzie, can you tell us any opening ceremony memories you have from the past, you know, watching Chris at 2012, or what it was like in, in Sochi, just what your experiences are with opening ceremonies in the past? Well, you spent quite a lot of time, um, it was downstairs in Sochi, so there was a big sort of car parking area underneath. Mm. Um, the stadium and there was a lot of pin swapping um, a lot of um, just joy really you know going to chat you're meant to sort of stay as a team together kind of pend as Great Britain so you stay together but you can't resist you know going to chat to other athletes from other nations and congratulating them for being selected to be here um, so it's really exciting and you can hear things going on upstairs and you can see the dancers kind of coming through or different acts that are on, having no idea what the first half of the opening ceremony will be until I watch it at home, uh, you know, watch it at home months later. And then the countries kind of go out ahead of you one by one and, and you're waiting with your, your um, kind of supervisor who has the Great Britain. And then you, you walk near the ramp and sort of can just see up the tunnel of the, the night light and, the, and, the, and or the night sky and all the lights and everything flashing. And you're told again to wait 
and get in line all together and, and try and sort of remember what your position was. And then over the announcement, it says, athletes, be quiet, in French first and then English. And then Great Britain. And it really is that moment that it just tingles all over you and you sort of don't know what to do. You don't know whether to sort of hold someone's hand to help you along because it's, it's a really overwhelming moment of just no, thinking, where am I meant to look? What am I meant to be doing? And, and just trying to take everything in, every moment in. It's amazing. Oh, yeah, just a quick follow-up. Have you spoken to the other half, mum and you know, the parents? What, what's their reaction when you told them about this? And how did it compare with some of the other things like the trip to the palace and all the other things <laughs> we've had in the last four years? I, I found out, I think it was Monday, that I would be the flag bearer. And it's been very difficult to keep it confidential. I did tell James, um, and he was really, really chuffed, actually. Um, it's hard to know how proud they are of you over the phone. You can see a lot more in facial emotions <laughs> and when they're in front of you. But I know when mum and dad find out, probably on the, on the news, on BBC, um, yeah, I think they'll be really pleased. I hope. <laughs> Um, Lizzie, the medal target has been mentioned. I mean, skeleton. Obviously, we've 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 had some sort of heritage building up, but other sports, no sports. We're trying to sort of build this heritage, and there's a lot of talk about becoming a, a sort of serious winter nation. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just interested how that is sort of being discussed among the team. Is that being discussed? You know, the ambitions are sort of soaring. Basically, money's soaring. Um, it feels like there is a sort of weight of this. Is that is that a good weight or a hard weight to carry? I don't think any athletes are really aware of, of the weight of expectation of other people because as an athlete, you're so focused in on your own, you know, what, what training sessions do I need today? What, what do I need to eat today to be recovered? You know, how much sleep do I need to make sure I'm getting? And there, there's just so many little bits and bobs, you know, is my sled ready? I've got to do runner prep or bits and bobs. So there's a whole world going on around us that's you know happening but actually we're just totally focused in the moment and hopefully that is the way that results will come and success will come and I think it's not only skeleton of course that has been successful which hopefully will be again it's all these other events you know we've got the slope star we've got mixed which we're not in but you know there's lots of other events exciting events which will be added which we will hopefully be successful for in the future um but it, you can tell that it's a strong team you know you you look around the room and you you know i know the results of of different athletes um and you, i was sitting yesterday down in the the physio room um, with loads of different athletes from different sports and everyone's just doing their bits. At half past nine, ten o'clock at night, people are still stretching, speaking to the doctor, speaking to the physio, making sure they've done everything they need to do. Um, and it's relaxed, you know, it's a, it's a relaxed confidence. Everyone's doing the best they can to prepare. And I do think we believe in ourselves. Any final questions? Sean? Apologies, uh, last one. Um, the couple of Germans that are one and two in the world rankings, uh, can you tell us a bit about Jacqueline and Tina and uh, how nice would it be to get one over them? Well, it was Jacqueline's birthday two days ago, so she's just turned 23, so she's just now become a senior athlete, which is extraordinary that she's been able to compete in the Junior World Championships for years and win for years. You know, she has been an up-and-coming athlete since I started, so she is so well-deserving of her ranking position. She's got a slower start push, but you sometimes you just can't outdrive her on the track um, and then Tina Herman who is a fierce competitor but sometimes can't quite see the competition through with both runs so it'll be really interesting to see how they react to a much more challenging environment and a four-run competition and it's not just the gems that I want to see one over on it's the Canadians you know it's it's every single athlete out there that when I'm on the start block you know I'm against everyone but I'm also not really against the track I'm more working with the, I'm, I'm hoping the track will work with me to, to, to show me the best lines you know it sounds very romantic but <laughs> yeah sorry to bring this up again but if you did happen to race against Nikki Tina would you treat her could you treat her in the same way that you treat these two Germans in terms of threats or would you have a different emotional dynamic in that situation i think my um emotional state at the moment with 
um, certain Russian athletes is just to have no emotion. I've certainly been through the roller coaster over the past few years. I, I really enjoyed having a conversations, you know, as best I could with Maria and Elena. Um, but but now, um, whenever I see them, I will just look at the floor and carry on and, and not allow myself to be drawn into a situation where I don't want to be. I've worked too hard to be here to let someone else... Um, draw me in a direction that I don't want to be drawn so I will do the best that I can for me and for Great Britain okay thank you everybody thanks for your time thank you, thank you.